Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this very cute box pouch caddy. This is a little holder that will wrap around two zipper box pouches and it also has some zipper pockets in it for smaller items. So if you haven't already checked out the box pouch tutorial, you can check that out. That will be linked below. But these box pouches are a different size for this pattern. So all the measurements will be over at the blog post, which will be linked below, as well as the information icon in the top right hand corner of this video. So you can go over to the blog post to get all your measurements and you can see more photos and any of the materials I use will all be linked over there so you can you know get exactly what I used. So this is the zipper box pouch. It has absolutely no raw edges so I would definitely watch that video if you haven't already made one of these. They are very addictive I can tell you that. So like I said this is the blog post. I like to have blog posts and I know it bugs people that they have to click away but it's really better so that I can have more information as opposed to putting everything in the description box and it also helps my channel grow. Okay, so I will use a lining and an outer fabric. So for each portion of the bag, I will have one lining and one outer fabric that measures the same. So I have the larger piece, which is the outer fabric. And then I have three sets of pieces for the middle that will be in between the zippers. And then I will have another piece, which is for the handle. And then I'm going to be using two zippers that are at least seven inches in length and then a piece of bias tape that measures the um, perimeter of the piece, which I gave myself about 68 inches. So my first step is going to be taking the two longest pieces and I'm going to be making sort of a quilt sandwich. Um, I'm just gonna take my fusible fleece and I'm going to iron that onto one of the pieces and then I will put the outer fabric and sandwich the fleece in between. So you could use your quilt batting um, or a medium weight interfacing. And if you wanted to get creative, you could totally quilt this um, and just you know have fun and do some fun designs if you wanna do a little bit of practicing. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to pin that all together it's not necessary if you're not quilting it, but I just did it just so that it stays together. And then I'll place that to the side and we can start working on our handle. I am also going to put a piece of fusible fleece on the handle just to make it um, a little bit thicker. Um, or you could use your medium weight interfacing or you don't have to. I did have um, I did have a big enough piece so that there is four layers of fabric. So it does give you a good, you know, a good, I don't know, what do you call it? A good girthy handle, <laughs> that sounds horrible. So now I'm just going to uh, do what I just did and then sew down the sides, both sides, and then it will look like a strap. And then I'll place that to the side and we will work on putting in all of our zippers. So like I said, I have two zippers that are a little over seven inches and I'm gonna take the two smallest pieces and I will attach that on one side. Make sure that your zipper pull is facing the um, outer fabric. I'll use my zipper foot and I will sew along that edge. And if you can't get past your zipper, then you can stop your machine and then unzip your zip and then you can continue on. And then after that, I'm going to uh, flip the fabric right sides out and then I'll do a top stitch along the zipper. I'm not gonna show you um, every single zipper installation. I'll show you like what I'm doing, but I'm not gonna show you the sewing of everyone just so that I don't make this video uh, like 45 minutes long. So I'm taking my next two pieces, which is actually the longest piece. I did, the, this is wrong, so disregard, but this is the longest piece. See, as you can see, it's changed. <laughs> see, I even screw up. So I took the longest piece and I attached that to the other side of the zipper. And now I will install the other zipper on the other side of that long piece. And we're gonna put the zip side down onto the outer fabric. We'll take the lining and we will bring it around back to the top 
and then sandwich your zipper in between the layers making sure all your raw edges are nicely lined up and we will sew along that zipper and then we will flip it right sides out and again do a top stitch along the teeth. And then we'll take the last piece, which is the medium sized piece, and we will install that on the other side of this zipper. So if you are working with a directional fabric, um, try to be vigilant and pay attention so that you don't end up accidentally. It's funny because I look in my sash and I buy a lot of directional fabric, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt. <laughs> ah, anyways. So yeah, so we're gonna do that again, and then we flipped it, and then we right, we did a little top stitch again. Okay, so we have the two main pieces, and then we have uh, the zipper portion, and we're going to put that together with the linings together. So this is how it's gonna go. And I'm just going to pin that all into place so that it is all lined up on the sides. And we're going to do a few rows of stitches to um, basically identify where our uh, little pouches are going to be. So I measured four inches from the one side and then I measured again uh, six inches from that first little marking we made. And then I measured one inch away from the other zipper on the other side. So it's going to be a large pouch and a small pouch. And then I just sewed along, I just marked it with a pin and then I just sewed a straight line. If you have any excess, you know, you can all trim that off. And, and now I'm going to just take my box pouches and I'm going to measure out where I'm going to put my handle. I measured it in about six inches. But just to be sure, I decided to wrap the box or wrap the caddy around the box pouches just so that I could have my handle centered within the box pouches. And then I just clip those into place and those will be secured once we start doing our bias tape. So this is, that's the next step. <laughs> so I'm just going to take my bias tape and I'm going to put it along the edge with the raw edges lined up with raw edges of the caddy and this is how I miter my corners when I get to it. If you want you can of course round your corners you don't have to make them a straight angle like this. I chose to do a rounded corner as well as a um, straight corner so just to show you guys. Some people find the rounded corners are just easier to work with but I think they're both the pain in the butt. <laughs> okay, so after after that, you will do some trimming and some snipping. If you're doing rounded corners, you're gonna snip the corners just so that it releases some of the tension and you can you know, easily flip your bias tape around. But there is, you know, some parts that are a little bulky, like, you know, where the handle is and stuff. So you're gonna wanna trim it down really good so that you can flip the bias tape over the raw edge so you can hide everything. I didn't film myself sewing it or maybe I screwed up, I'm not sure. But you just flip over the bias tape and then you do a top stitch and then that's it. Then, <laughs> then it's done. So now I'm going to do my closure. If you wanted to do Velcro, of course, you could just sew on pieces of Velcro. But I am going to be using some snaps. I'm using the plastic snaps and I will have a link for the two or the video on all about these snaps if you're n interested um, that will be at the blog post also. So I'm just going to give it a little test run and um, just see where I, I think I want my little snaps to be. Um, when you look at my box pouch it does kind of look like that maybe I, I made it a little big but I also accounted for if these little box pouches are full of things such as you know makeup or tools or whatever that you know it will they will get a little bigger inside my little caddy so I gave it a little bit of room just to account for that. 
But if you did do Velcro, then you could make it adjustable so that um, if you did have your little box patches that were overflowing, then you could account for that. So like I said, I will have the video and that will go into greater detail on how to install these snaps. If you're actually thinking about getting one of these systems, I really love just having them around. Um, I don't use them very often, but when I do, and even then sometimes I've had to put snaps in my kids clothing. So they're just good to have. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I put two snaps and now I'm just going to secure my handle a little better. I just measured in one inch from either side and I'm just gonna do a quick stitch there. And because of where I placed my little zipper pockets and stuff, um, there's no zipper pocket here. So that all this stitching and stuff like that won't be in the way. But those little snaps, they were the backing of the snaps. Um, did end up inside one of the pouches. So you just need to be careful when you're doing that, that you're not closing up one of your zipper pouches. So then I'm pretty much done. So now I can just put my little zipper box pouches inside there and then I can start getting organized. So, you know, if you wanted to do like hair accessories on one side and makeup on the other side and you can use your little zipper, you know, the little zipper pouches, you can put, you know, smaller items, Q-tips or your nose strips or jewelry or I don't know you can use your imagination or you can make it into a craft caddy put the reds and scissors and oh there's just so many possibilities and it's such a cute little caddy so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did please give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and share it across all of your social media platforms so thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video bye guys